Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about the, the Glenn Templeton version of Ball Cap. And, and if you wanted to, actually, a, a lot of this is very, very similar to the Dylan Scott version, if you've heard the other version, um, where, except we're going to end up capoing on fourth fret to kind of match the, the recording. So we're going to start off on a G major chord, and we play G major. First finger goes to the A string on the second fret, second finger on the low E string on the third fret, and the third finger is going to go to the high E string on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord and it sounds really, really happy. Now you can also kind of take the third finger and go to the B string third fret, pinky on the high E string third fret. If you strum all those together, that's another way you can play your G major chord. And then from the G major, we're going to be going to a D major chord, we play D major. First finger goes to the G on the second fret, second finger on our high E on the second fret, and third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you strum the D string to the high E string, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really happy. Now through the song though, you will kind of hear the second fret on the low E string kind of come out of that chord. And if you put those together, you could kind of do your thumb over the low E string. Um, that's called a D slash F sharp. You want to kind of use that through the song for your Ds. Or another possibility is to use something called D sus slash F sharp, where you do your first finger on the low E string second fret, second finger on the G string second fret, third finger on the B string third fret, and the pinky on the high E string third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a D slash F sharp, which is or D sus slash F sharp. You think about that for your D chords too. And then from there we'll be going to an E minor chord, we play E minor. First finger goes to the A on the second fret, second finger on the D string second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor chord and it sounds really, really sad. Now you might also want to think about adding in the third finger on the B string third fret, pinky on the high E string third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an E minor seven chord. It sounds really sad. And from the E minor, we're going to be going to a C major chord. We're going to play C major. First finger goes to the B on the first fret, second finger on the D string second fret, third finger on the A string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major chord. It sounds really happy. Now, a good substitute for that, though, could be a C major 9. And then we can play C major 9. First finger goes to the D on the second fret, second finger on the A string third fret, third finger on the B string third fret, and the pinky on the high E string third fret. And if you strum the A string to the high E string, that sounds a C major 9. So you can think about that for your C chords, too. Now, a lot of times with a song like this, though, to make it more interesting and kind of support my voice, I like using something called a strum pattern. I'll talk about a couple different ones, but one of my favorite strum patterns for a 4-4 like this is down, down, up, up, down, up. So we took the G and just tried that a lot. You'd have down, down, up, up, down, 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 up. So we tried that through our chord progression. We'd have down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, Um, so you might want to use that strum pattern. And what it really feels like through the recording, actually, there's a couple different 16th note strum patterns you may want to play around with. And what I mean by that is if you're tapping your foot to the beat, right now the down, down, up, up, down, kind of divides that beat into two parts. One, two, one, two, and that's called an eighth note. What a 16th note is is where you divide that into four parts. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And one of my favorite 16th note strum patterns is long down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down. What I mean by that is if you take the G and do a down for four. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. That's what you do on the first beat. Then on the second beat, you're doing a down on one, down on three, up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, down, down, up, down, down, up, down, down, up. And then on the third beat, you're doing an up on two, down on three. So you're going one, two, three, four, one, up, down, one, up. Down up, down up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down up, down up, down up, down up, down up, down up. So all together, you got down, down, down up, up, down, down up, down up, down, down up, 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 down
and that's what you can do on the first beat. Second beat, you do the up on two, down on three. So you have one, two, three, four, one up, down, one up, down, one up, down. And then on the third beat, you'd be doing an up on two, up on four. So you go one, two, three, four, one up, up, one up, up, one up, up. And then on the last beat, you'd be going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down. So all together with that sixteenth pattern, you'd have down. Our chord progression. We had to. basically be repeating that until we get to our bridge part. Now bridge is just kind of a big C chord, so you may want to kind of just kind of make big downs on the C's when you hit the bridge. Now the weird part is to play along with Glenn Templeton though, instead of starting on a G chord, like Dylan Scott does, he starts on a B major chord, <laughs> which is cool. So so to play along with the recording, what you want to do is take a capo, and if you put the capo on the fourth fret, then now your G major is really a B major chord, your D major is really an F sharp major chord, your E minor is really a G sharp major chord, or G sharp minor, and then the C major is really an E major chord. But you could work it with just the down, down, up, up, down, up, and have G, down, up, up, down, up, D, down, up, up, down, up, D minor, down, up, up, down, up, C, down, up, up, down, up, G, down, up, down, up, D, down, up, up, down, up, D minor, down, up, up, down, up, C, down, up, up, down, up. Or you can try the 16th pattern with the down, 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 up, up, down, down, up, down, up. And you have G, down, down, up. Sixteenth of the pattern, and we have G. And a lot of times on that first down of the strum patterns that we're using, you can do the low B string for the bass on the G chord, kind of with the bass down, up, up, down, up, kind of going back that pattern. And then on the D, you have the D string for your bass, unless you're doing the D slash F sharp, in which case you have the low E string for the bass, down, up, up, down. And then on the E minor, you have the low E for your bass. And on your C, you'd have the A for your bass. So we tried it through our, our, our pattern with the bass down, up, up, down, up. We'd have G with Louis Bass, G slash F sharp Louis Bass, G minor Louis Bass, C with an A bass, down, up, down, up, G with Louis Bass, D with Louis Bass, G minor Louis Bass, C with an A bass. So you want to kind of experiment with that. Or you can take your 16th note patterns and then add basses to those. Bass down, down, up, up, down, down, up, down, up. We have to use bass down, down, up, down, down, up, down, B slash F sharp.
bridge part where we kind of got that C, 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 and then we kind of pick it up back on our chorus. G. So feel free to kind of take this lesson and kind of embellish it in any way you want. of how you can strum through Ball Cap by Glenn Templeton. So, good luck!